One of my memories that, uh, that really has lasted with me is Hurricane Juan. Uh, I remember the storm really starting on the Saturday before it made landfall. Uh, I was at home, I, I was on my days off, and I looked at that storm on satellite, and, and there was something that just twinged at that moment, thinking, oh boy, here we go. This could be really something. Hurricane Juan was one of those bittersweet storms as a producer at the Weather Network. We always look towards these big, massive storms uh, coming to land, unleashing their wrath, and we always get excited and run around and work. But being from Halifax, it was bittersweet in the sense that I had friends there, I had family there, I knew the area very well. There was that feeling of, I need to check up on them and I need to find out what's going on. Uh, but at the same time, I had a job to do. Those first few hours were critical because we were able to get to people and communicate prior to the storm's arrival. And there were those first reports of, oh, the power's out in, in Chester, the power's out in parts of Dartmouth. And, and once that started to go, you second guess sometimes, you think, did I say everything I could have? And this was by far the most exciting, the largest storm I had ever come. Exciting, but then it got very scary. I remember in particular where we're coming along Lower Water Street. There's people, kind of three people standing in a doorway. They got water up over their ankles. I thought, oh, it makes a great shot. There's still some power in this area for some reason. So let's stop and take a shot. And then when we stopped, we had to stop in floodwaters. We realized that they were staring at a building behind me that the, the roof is like flapping up and down. You can't even hear a few feet from you. You know, the reporter's trying to do a stand up on camera. And even with the headset, you can't barely hear anything. It's so loud, like it sounds like a train coming by. But a train that doesn't stop, it just kind of continually blows. You have a hard time standing up, you have a hard time holding the camera up. Even if you weren't right on the waterfront, you could taste the salt in the air. The next day was very surreal. Woke up in a hotel without power, without water, without any of that, very little sleep. And you come out of the hotel, and like right in our hotel parking lot, there's lamp poles smashed over on top of vehicles, windows are blown out of the hotel, and it is sunny and humid. It was almost like somebody just flicked the other switch and you turned into a completely different day. Seeing those same places with uh, power lines down, trees down, damaged houses, roofs ripped off buildings, boats that were supposed to be in the water but were on land. You wanted to be there in a sense to help with the recovery right away. Well, you can't physically go there and do it. I was just trying to do uh, with my team at the Weather Network the best we could to supply information to uh, everybody who was watching. I don't know how many, how many hours I worked that day, but I probably worked my fair share of 16 or 18 hours on that particular day after one. And just leaving the studio and then realizing that I think my job's done as far as reporting what we had to report and informing the people uh, as a weather organization. After that, it was about going home and finding out whether everybody I knew was okay. Hurricane Juan was a storm that was a one of a kind. It was a hurricane on Canadian land. And that's like talking about snow in Mexico. It's not something you see every day, but when it does happen, it's, uh, you remember it. Retiring the name of Juan was certainly the right thing to do. This was a storm that uh, we have never seen the type of impact on the Maritimes that Juan produced. The modern day infrastructure was ravaged by this storm. So Nova Scotians will never see another Juan. That doesn't mean to say they won't see another hurricane, but there definitely will be no more Juan.